It's not only the natives that have suffered the crimes of those who think themselves the owners of Rondonia. The landless movement, which we visited at the trade union in Vienna, has paid for its principal demand with dozens of human lives. What they seek is a parcel of land on which to support their families. It was August 9, 1955. At 3 in the morning they attacked us, killing right from the start. The first person to fall was even a military police officer, a good friend of ours, who was killed by the police themselves, those who were in league with the bosses in order to justify it so that they could attack everyone. The second victim was a minor, a seven-year-old girl. They said that it was a stray bullet, but no way. It was on purpose, to incite us, so then we would attack the police. And that's how it all started, from three in the morning to six that afternoon, when the shooting stopped. The Corumbiara massacre has still not been cleared up. Antenor Duarte was detained as an instigator in connection with it, but set free once again for a lack of evidence. Dead people burnt on the spot. Burnt merchandise, mountains of burnt rice, cans of oil. They killed children. They killed adult men, women. Nobody has ever said anything until today. Acontece que na madrugada do dia 9, o acampamento foi cercado por todos os lados e começou o que foi o massacre de Corumbiara. Dozens of landless families, forgotten by a government that had promised them land and a future in Rondonia, had occupied a private ranch. Without thinking twice, the landowners, together with the police, attacked the camp in a war without limits. Once again, Blood was spilt in Amazonia, where death does not distinguish between peasants and natives because it is always sent by the same people. In Corumbiara, it began first with the massacre of Indians. I know a ranch where more than 400 Indians died. It was the ranch of Antonio Jose, one of the region's landowners, who's now left here and who killed a great many Indians. Today we have Amir Lando as a senator of our republic, a man who now has his land because he defended Antonio Jose before the law for the massacre of Indians, Indians and prospectors. The senator Amir Lando, today a minister in the government of Lula da Silva, that great example for Brazilian society, has a dark past connected with the colonization process in Rondonia. With annual growth of 20%, this Amazon state has gone from a reported 37,000 people in the 1950s to a million and a half today. And of course the Indians, who nobody counts, are in the way. So you say that poison sugar is used to kill the Indians? Of course. It's the best way to get rid of them. The Indians really like sweet things. Smoke, alcohol, new and forbidden things for them. And their extinction came in this way. Although we can't look into it fully, because there are some who still use these methods. Not long ago, there were a great many Indians here. And the few that still remain, if the government did not protect them, They would disappear, because a good part of their land is already pasture land.
The most amazing jungle on the planet is in a losing battle in Rondonia. Swiss-type pasture land is taking over at an ecological and social cost we cannot afford to pay. And the end of the world is coming for the natives who are today treated like pariahs in their own home. Brazil exports more and more beef from this area. It sells this meat as green organic beef. Knowing what we know, can we really see it as such? The world often treats us as if we were the ugly duckling. They say that here, we are deforesting everything. But that's not the truth. At present, more than 75% of our jungle land is still intact. Many of our products from Amazonia were taken abroad. There are being many countries, whose names I'm not going to list, although the whole world knows who they are, who don't produce anything and sell products from here saying they're from there. Some come as protectors of nature, but they are the real wolves disguised in sheep's clothing, telling everyone that we must take care of this, while they are taking everything themselves. From what I know of the governor, he is a businessman who has close ties to the timber industry. He receives a great deal of support from timber merchants. Also, if you check, you'll find that the Secretary of the Environment is a rancher. So you can well imagine that the government is not very motivated by environmental matters. Ranting only benefits the great landowners, who have many resources. Therefore, I wouldn't call it development, because it only benefits a small number of people. Many of them don't even live in Rondonia. They have land here only to invest in property, and they have no interest in bringing progress to the state of Rondonia. This documentary does not seek compassion, but demands decency and justice. Recognition of these thousand-year-old cultures, heirs to the land used by a few to do business. These are people on the edge. Human beings protected at some risk by the National Indian Foundation's Department of Unknown Tribes, for whom the end of the world appears to have come. So that you can put this family photo in your most beloved album, they have posed together, Akunsu, Kanue, and this frightened, almost invisible man, the Indian of the whole. Three tribes, 10 people who need us all.